Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, the function and uses of drawing. Um, I'm going to show you some images of my work, of my paintings and drawings, which kind of either lead into them or intervene somehow. So I want us to think about the relationship between um, what we might define as drawing and, in my case, painting. Thank you. So the, um, this first group of images is four of them, came directly from workshops that I was doing here in March and April. And um, drawing was very much important to these images because um, the forms you see aren't pre-drawn, they're drawn with the blade. So for me, what I found was that cutting, actually drawing with a knife, um, kind of cut through expectations um, and allowed me to produce imagery in a less predictable manner than I would if I had pre-drawn it and then cut around it. So it was a kind of resistance of the material, that actual difficulty in, in manipulating the blade, which in many ways gave, us, gave the imagery its look and its feel. So that came out of the, that came, came out of the method or the inquiry. So it's not that I sat down and thought about or how these things were look. It was the actual process which gave me the result and the, um, the final um, help me kind of generate the, the visual identity of the, of the body. Um, one thing I wanted to go back to was that when I I worked as a scenic artist for a long time and. One thing that always really impressed me was that the, the scenic artists used to have this phrase, they used to say, draw with the colour. And I never really grasped what they meant by that. I always just think, what do they mean by that? Draw with the colour. Well, you know, you'd have a big brush, so there would be big pots of colour. Um, they call paint colour, by the way, and they said, pass me a colour. Draw with the colour. Um, but I kind of guess what they meant was to find a kind of very direct connection between. Um, the activity and the end result. They work formulaically, by the way, so it's, they don't, what they kind of, what they possess in technical facility, they lack in imagination. That's really important to bear that in mind. Um, so for me, it's the, it's the, when I say the look of the work, it's that idea of what does the imagination envisage. So those collages gave me a method of making images, which this is part of the, Process. So this isn't a final piece of work. This is this is my this is a continuation of drawing in a way. So again, I was cutting paintings off with um, with blades and repositioning um, material to produce or generate imagery. That idea of collage, in many ways, what kind of what I think about. Kind of principles of that drawing are that it's movable. You can reposition collage, um, and then you can commit. You can also reverse it. You can you can repeat it by using the stencil. So, in many ways, for me, it kind of I say kind of cuts through expectations. It bypasses my traditional kind of skill and gives me gives me another um, way of thinking about my work. So this was a, this is one of the first paintings that came out of those collages. And these pieces of work were the first pieces I made in, they were made in May, and I was beginning to produce my final group of work for my doctoral exhibition, which I had in June. So um, it took me a while, but once I kind of got, got that process in, in um, once I kind of achieved that process, I was able to run with it and just do it. And I felt very liberated. So these are a few of the images. So this one isn't collage. And that last one, that one is there was a collage of pieces <coughs> on the ground. This one is not collage, it's the use of the same collage that's drawn around and then used as a stencil, so it's masked out. It's kind of taking the same idea but technically changing it. Um, I kind of ran with that for a while, and then this was the last piece I made before having to kind of reassess what I was doing and then use drawing in a, in a different way. Okay, so that's, my that's the first 
that's the first um, description of what drawing is for me. And I haven't kind of shown the drawing yet. I'm not sure you can draw it. I'm not sure the drawing. Um, I've talked about drawing, drawing with a blade. I've talked about um, how that relates to the paintings, but I'm not sure the drawing. So after I made this one, I was kind of thought, well, I'm getting, I'm getting closer to this kind of this amorphous outcome that I can't quite see, this painting that I don't really know what it is yet. So this was getting me closer. Um, and I don't know whether for I don't know whether anyone in the room is makes kind of drawings as interventions or um, how the idea of drawing might work in, in terms of your own practice. But I kind of think about it a lot and I think, well, apart from what I've spoken about, drawing might be a more, a more seminal thing where it's able to generate ideas. Um, drawing is also maybe a thing where thinking is maybe put on hold and there's maybe a more direct connection between the feeling and doing. I'm not, I'm not sure about how to phrase that, but some of you might know what I mean when I say that. Okay, so this was a collage piece, and I then made what may be called more um, recognisable drawings. So these are very small drawings, made very, very quickly. Um, and you can see that they do have a relationship to this, so an image like that, and series of images like this, you can see they're kind of connected. Um, but I was very aware that I was kind of trying to use these pieces to, to provoke and predict and um, so they weren't really interventions, they were kind of, they were trying to give me ideas in that kind of really basic sketch way, you know, the, the sketches forcibly, the ideas forcibly. So out of these ones, these pieces, um, the most, a group of very, very small paintings, so um, these pieces are, they're not much bigger than that small pieces of work. Um, and many of these were direct, um, were made with a drawing in front of me, so I was able to, to work quickly from the drawing into a painting. So these are charcoal on um, acrylic with additional layers of oil, so they're kind of a mix mixture of different things. Um, then going from these, I was thinking, what, well, kind of into the, I was into the main, process now making my doctorate exhibition and I knew that these pieces were these pieces were closer to the, the, the kind of paintings that I wanted, finished paintings I wanted to make. Um, but I couldn't quite envisage them yet. So I kind of worked from this this is a this is a piece I was quite pleased with and um, so from this from the drawings into the drawing within this small study I then made this piece here, which was the first piece in my doctorate exhibition that I kind of, I kind of thought was, um, for me, really close to the, the paintings I wanted to make. And I kept on thinking all the time when I was doing this show, like, um, just make the paintings you want to make. And I, I was thinking about that, and I've said it to, in, in workshops, that's the only advice I can really give people is, we're often kind of thinking, oh, if I, I set in motion this inquiry, I'll get to the pieces I would eventually make. And I, and I would say, if you have any inkling of what those pieces are, make them. Because I know myself, I can kind of put off, I can put off the kind of difficulty of, you know, the difficult task of being in that position where you're having to engage imagination and um, come up with, the, um, with, with, that, with that work. Um, so I kept on thinking within these, like, just make the work you want to make. And um, I was kind of quite, I thought I did that, so that was, that was for me that was a success. Um, so these next few images are the drawings and the, and the final painting. So I'm going through kind of, this is a large piece of work, so um, probably as big as that actually. Um, so it's, it's a fairly big piece of work. Um, oh, just a bit, that, that's now the painting was sort of emulating that sense of collage and that yeah. kind of play with space, yeah. but not actually collaging, yeah, using that, that language. Yeah, so it's kind of the, the visual identity of those things. Are, uh, yeah, emulating, that's maybe a, I'll show away from that word, but it, I, I guess I, I should recognise it was trying to emulate the, the, 
procedures and the look of the movie. Um, it's not that they've given me something to emulate. Um, but then I always think, oh, emulation, innovation. Are they kind of, are they worlds apart? Um, yeah, so it doesn't come out of nothing. It is, it is, it's important to recognise that, yes, that was one of the functions of Toro. Talk about the function and role of Toro emulating. The painting was then able to emulate. And also, part of the procedure was the, the linear and fluid aspects of the drawing. It's, it's um, done on a stick. So it's detached, it's at arm's length. Yes, yeah, it's in a tease, it's <laughs> stick. <laughs> so, um, it's that, you know, I talk about resistance. It's the resistance. So, so I wasn't able to, I was able to work quickly, but the charcoal snapped, the stick kind of went out of control, and those things were important within within the generation of the work, because um, it had been in the study. So I was emulating those same things, but on a bigger scale, um, trying to use uh, <coughs> the kind of reach of my arm and my body in relation to the image. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about that, the, the detached, on the one hand, the, the stick was detached, so it kind of it gives you a distance between the doing and the work, but on the other hand, it was kind of the yeah, controlness of it connected me in another way. So I felt I was often running with this now. So this is a much, and this is this will show you some of the kind of procedure of how it works. So this is a small piece of work at that size, and it's a direct study for this second piece of work here. So you see the relationship. That's the study, and that's the final piece of work. So they're not coming out of nowhere. They're they're, they're, they're adhering to. Um, some of, the, some of the things that have been generated through the earlier processes and stages. And again, I'd say I don't know how you all work, but um, I certainly see people trying things out which then kind of come through into, into final pieces of the like that. Um, whether you formalise that and rationalise it and think about it, I, I'm not sure, but um, for me, I, I'm, I'm able to do that now after the event. So yeah, I've thought about it and I've rationalised it and I've thought how do these, during the process of making these images, sometimes they would, I, was, I thought, yeah, the direct studies for things, sometimes I was thought, I'm not sure what they are. So it's not, it's not as rational as I'm making it out to be, but because I've lived with it, I'm able to kind of, um, I'm trying to break it down into manageable chunks that I can impart and talk about in different ways. So these, I've selected these six images because they feed into and these three, these, these final paintings that I've shown in the doctor. Um, so some of those forms are kind of, they crop up again, I repeat them. Come in. Um, re explore them through the, through the actual paintings. So that kind of connection between the drawing, the painting, the drawing in the painting is. is that's the kind of stuff I think about. Also the kind of colour and how that might be anticipated. So these kind of striations of colour in an image like this and the use of kind of the separation between the figure and the ground. Um, the kind of, that's kind of generated in the, in the drawing. So these are the studies for that piece of work. So the imagery, so the drawings kind of give me the, the kind of clues for that final look. Um, this is, I've come to the end of this first part and um, that was the, this was the final piece I made for my doctoral presentation and um, it kind of came to, I don't know about yourselves but I'm also interested in this idea of things running their course and the body of work um, exhausting itself and coming to some, some kind of conclusion and then perhaps drawing being brought in to make sense of that after the event. So drawing as a... So apart from that, I made a few notes here, so apart from that kind of seminal and that role of drawing where it anticipates um, the identity of the work and, and kind of generates imagery and ideas for it, there's also perhaps after things there's an idea that drawing could be 
was thinking about drawing could be more finished thing in its own right. It could, it could not be an intervention, but it could be like a, and it could have an analysis, it could function to analyze what we've been doing. So after these, after this piece, I kind of thought I'd want to make some, generate some more ideas and then make some more finished looking drawings. So, um, just wanted to show you that this is how I presented the work um, in the doctorate exhibition I had. So it's kind of quite, quite clearly laid out. I didn't show the drawings, I just showed the finished piece. I had all these various ideas, like I was going to show a study painting, I was going to show drawing, study painting, but it became so academic that I kind of rejected that idea and just showed stand alone pieces of work. Um, I really liked that academic thinking in the context of a discussion like this, but it didn't work in, in terms of showing the work, it didn't work. But then, perhaps there is, a, perhaps there is scope for presentation of work in that way, you could think about, you know, just show a study and piece of work, that could be an exhibition. So after the, after the, I'll just go back to that image, sorry. After this I kind of paused, and I rethought them, and the drawings I'm going to show you in a minute slightly shift, but I'm doing talking, but perhaps we just have a discussion about or any ideas about how drawing might work for yourselves within the Like shape that there's like pool paints, I'll, I'll just like draw around it, yeah. so it's like it's more detailed. Yeah. I've seen you do that. Yeah, I was thinking of that the other day because obviously you sometimes have a thread and you put that uh -huh. linear thing there. Do you think yeah. that's se to separate the uh, narrow <coughs> to the ground? I don't know, I think it's more like a layering thing to add, like, to add something else, I guess. Mm. And, um, I don't know, I, I usually use like a, like a different colour, so there's a different sort of, you know, that stands out. Well, you think, drawing, you think of drawing very much in that linear, fluid, linear kind of way. Yeah. Because uh -huh. other people might think of drawing as a tonal uh -huh. kind of mass or plane. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I align my thinking to that. Uh -huh. I mean, the first thing I think of drawing is a kind of line, but I think the sculptor would think of drawing differently, so I don't know about it. Is there any other one in the room who would think would say it's not just lines, you know, that you're just coming at it as a some of the works on <coughs> two dimensions? So it's it's interesting what you're saying about how, how a sculptor might think about drawing differently in terms of objects. I've got a much diagrammatic, what I call diagrammatic drawing, which may be more functional and practical in a certain way to try and sort of think about physical space not necessarily as a study or a preemption of work, but as a kind of a, like a mapping out or a working out. Mm. Uh, and even in just a straightforward diagrammatic way, I kind of need to see things visually. Yeah. You know, so if I'm trying to work out how, um, how certain elements of, um, I don't know, projectors and surfaces and uh, other types of objects might interface with each other, then I'll, I'll make drawings for that. I like so that's a very different type of drawing, I guess. I like the idea of the diagrammatic, mm -hmm. that's kind of, yeah. Well, enough, Paul, I, think, I can see how a painting has, has sort of blueprints for sculpture. You know, when, when you did the original drawings and you colour and how it works, and you think, yeah, that would work great as a sculpture as well, you know, take it to that next level on. So, you know, they, they are three dimensions, aren't they, in the way you think. Right. Tom, do you want these to be sculptures? Do you want to, you, you get a sense of this? Well, I just, I just, I just, I'm talking about sculptures and, and you know, and you talk about diagrams. Mm -hmm. I thought, yeah. And earlier on when I was seeing other painting, I thought, yeah, it'd be, it'd be really uh, powerful to do sculpture, yeah. but, you know, well, like I said, they're, not, they're almost three dimensional anyway, because they've got that layering. Yeah, but I would think of sculpture as pictorial sculpture, so I've often, when I was cutting the skeletons out with a blade, and here, this room, actually, I thought, well, it'd be great if they were like that thick. Yeah. They had, a, they had an illusionistic kind of depth to them, the drop shadow, and they could just be stood up. But I do think of them like that sometimes. But I see them as... They're like di they're not just as you were. They're um, pictorial sculptures. Yeah, that's all I think. I would love to I would love to do that, you know, to have to make 
some sort of unit in it at all. And perhaps that sense comes through just the way you bring quality. Yeah, it does, and it's also with collage, with, with the, what I found with the collage is it's, it's right, it's just yeah, it's it's lovely, lovely. So, yeah. The really, for me, the really liberating thing about the collage was that by cutting out a figure and taking it, so I could kind of cut something out from there and do that with it, put it there, it also left me this, this shape with a hole in it, which I could then put over the top of, we're going to take that shape and put it over there and generate another form. So giving me positive and negative spaces that maybe just a line drawing wouldn't, although you could say that a line drawing is quite outside of the internet. Certainly those things were, were, were um, I was able to make a much more direct connection with those ideas than I would have had. Um, but going back to the idea of drawing with the colour, you know, draw with the colour, do, do you, do you, within your own practices, do you think of when you're painting or when you're sculpting or you're making installations, do you think of it as drawing sometimes, like the elements are well drawn? Because I've often heard painters say that, you know, like, look at the drawing of it, but it's a painting, it's, they talk about the great drawing of it. So, does anyone kind of share that? I get uh, the sense of joy if I'm like obviously Richard Long's the old thing. Mm. And I get the sense of joy when I'm actually walking, you know, within the work. So take it you know, I don't I don't think of it as drawing on paper, I think of drawing it on a on a landscape. Mm. So that's how I sort of see it as different than a painter. That's the, I think that's a really good example. I mean that's the that's the extreme example, isn't it, Richard Long? Um you know, the line in the in the landscape being Drawing, but more importantly, the, the using himself as the, the medium for that mm -hmm. to generate to make that image or the, the mark. So yeah, drawing in, in drawing is in a preparatory sense in so many ways, but and drawing as a more direct direct element of the work or ingredient of the work. Yeah, I'm just thinking about what I do as well. So. Uh, Is it, like, is it like the, the, the intuitive and um, the spontaneous? Oh, sometimes, aspect of that. sometimes, just to get started. thinking but I'm, I'm burdened by thinking and I'm on not just myself but I've met loads of artists who would not do that because it might become illusionistic so they think painting's not illusion that illusionism so I can't do that. The reasons not to do things can be burdensome. But for me the great thing about the way I think about drawing is not against thinking but it's that all of that's put to one side and there's some kind of connection to I don't know whether it's unconscious um, but it's, there's, there's a connection to something else where things are coming out in a more direct way um, certainly in a more unpredictable way so even if I've gone to draw an eye it might be that I've not thought about it and it's got some um, shorthand in it that's the word it's got a short
shorthand that you wouldn't get if you were to sit down and really think of how you can work in your life. And you get it even if you do life drawing. You get that. Um, that happens, it starts to happen where you're working and not just using formula and um, technique, you're actually working and creating. Of what you know. Yeah, yeah, it's not that I'm it against it. Sometimes. Certainly not anti intellectual. Mm. Because I did, and the great example are those senior artists who the formula is so entrenched in them that they don't have the skill. So they have so much skill and facility, but they don't have the, any creativity and the idea of an imagination or an imaginary something that just doesn't come into it. There's one guy who I learned so much from when I was um, working as a senior artist, and he retired. And he'd been working in Drury Lane since he was 14. And as a working class um, artist at that time, being 14 in London, he wasn't going to go to art school. He was told to go to Drury Lane, and he was given a job in the theatre straight away. Um, so he's an artisan, and he, put, and he thought like an artisan. Um, but his facility was tremendous. He could do things with colour and painting that I've tried to replicate. He taught me a lot. And when he retired, I gave him some brushes. And he said to me, what have you got my nose for? I said, oh, so you can, you're free to paint now. He said, I ain't going to paint. He had no desire to do it. He was laughing. He said, I'm not going to do painting. I'm going to do that as a job all my life. And, um, that really, to me, I felt like a fool, but it's a nice story because it kind of illustrates something that I kind of think about a lot, which is, yeah, learn, learn all this stuff, and the facility is important, you know, some, for some artists, skills are really important, but there's no guarantee of um, the imagination or being innovative and creative. No, no, in fact, it might, it might restrict that. You know, when people think about that, skill versus um, discovery, um, mm -hmm. the shock of something being unfamiliar and kind of, and yet you know that's the creative team. Well, I was kind of interested where you got to, and maybe preempt, um, maybe I'm preempting what you're about to say. Well, it's kind of because you kind of got through that body of work, um, and then you're kind of asking me about the spaces for drawing, essentially. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of, I guess my question is, is, is then, I quite, you know, it's, it's interesting to sort of frame that, that the body of work kind of exhausts itself. Mm -hmm. uh, is then drawing for you a way out of that as well? So yeah. maybe that's what. Yeah, it was a way in. And it's exactly. Way yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, which is. <coughs> And I have not done that for, it's not like I'm doing drawing all the time, year after year. It's been quite, for me, working on paper and working, it's come out of those collage workshops that some of the instruments have been And it's led into drawing as the things that I'm talking about, drawing as a more traditional relationship to painting. And it's something I'd want to continue exploring the different uses of that. So if I go back to the, I don't know how we came back to this first. Press the press pad. Press the, yeah. Pad, the, the little yeah. bit, yeah. Or double press it. after I did that exhibition and they're kind of just basically you know, <coughs> they're lying, they're lying, they're, there's no colour, everyone's taking things out. Um, I'm getting into kind of maybe the more bare bones of um, the images. So these were made up, these were kind of these weren't trying to anticipate things, these were made trying to re they weren't copies of the painting but I was thinking of I was reimagining them in a basic way. And I thought well, I'd make some more finished looking drawings, some you know, finished and inverted commas. Um, 
And these are the first small ideas of that. So these are, these are A4 as well, so they're, sketch, they're sketchy and they're small. And, um, but they're kind of um, perhaps resembling more finished things in themselves. Well, is that what you mean? Is that double thick? Or no, they're um, colored pencils. pencils. Right, okay. Decent colour pencils, but, but I'm, not, I'm definitely not opposed to people working with felt tips. And that, that's a really good approach. You know. In fact, for me, that the <coughs> colour felt tips is quite. Yeah, it's just something to do with it. It's always difficult with projectors, isn't it? Yeah, but they are quite yeah. silly colours. And I, yeah. when I buy the pencils, I do, you know, I buy, I do choose the colours. Not. You know, I went away to do these drawings and. I didn't do them in the studio at home. I was away for a while and I selected the colours before I went and I just choose this range of colours. That, you know. And coming back from those things, I thought well, I'm going to give myself some challenges. So I started working with pastel and charcoal and thinking, right, it's a more painterly um, material. And I was really pleased with this image. I mean, I, of all the things I've done, I really like this drawing. I was really happy with the look of it and the feel of it and the use of materials because it, uh, it's, it's made it, it's made on, it's made flat. Whereas often I work on it's made flat, so the stuff, the, ch the pastel breaking and um, staying on the surface, and I'm able to look and be quite physical with it and in get in make indentations with it. Um, so. And yeah, it's kind of scribble, it's a scribble drawing, isn't it? So it's got that other kind of idea to it as well. So moving on from that piece, I, I thought I'm going to make some more um, of these pastel pieces. So they're all much larger, they're not as four, they're all like getting on very one size. And you've got watercolour paper or um, on pastel paper of some, some sort. And at first I wasn't using charcoal, but after these, after these pieces, um, I started working with charcoal and black and white pastel. So there's a lot. I went out, when I've got some a huge range of greys, so I made like four, five different grey pastels. Again, the qualities of, of the materials quite good. Um, so it's quite. There's a really nice um, velvety quality to the, and also like. A, painting kind of quality. So I was thinking of these things as more finished pieces in their own right, but ultimately what I really wanted from them was having made that doctoral body of work, I was thinking like, I want to I wanna kind of make some more paintings. Um, so they were kind of feeding into, they were feeding into, um, or developing into a, a way of making the painting. Made a selection, I think I've put three of the black and white ones, and I'm going to show three of the coloured ones. But that's a selection from, from quite a lot. I think I made eight black and white ones and 12 coloured ones of this sort of size and finish. And it was a really interesting, um, it was a really interesting few weeks' work. And it's good to not have that pressure of like, you've got to show, you've got some. You've got to go public with the work, and these are more, although they're finished things, they're kind of they're more speculative. What kind of scale are these? May 1. So I've made these, I put, I put, and put them to one side, and I've made the, the last group of paintings I'm going to show you are things that I made during the summer holiday, and this is the first one, and they're a lot smaller than the, they're a lot smaller than the Doctor pieces, these first few, they're, I 
think it's one meter by one meter. Yeah. A more manageable size. And you can see that they're more they're more linear, or rather than the line isn't made by charcoal, it's, it's a kind of poor um, fluid line which I don't have much control over. And yeah, I kind of had this idea that, so it, for me this image was very much kind of three, it's a kind of relationship between three figures or three heads. Um, and that's a kind of motif that I've run through all of those drawings, so I've got to through it. So, each one of them's got these three kind of separate um, heads, faces, I don't know how you describe them, but having come to that idea that was the start of Could you say just a little bit about the three heads, what, what that sort of... Yeah, it's a kind of family of things, so they're kind of personal. They're, 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 um, yeah, they're, for me, they're about relationships and they're about... Um, they're, about rela they're about relationships and children, so it's sort of fun. I think they're the family of things. Um, Often they're kind of connected to each other or grouping two of them are, are kind of distance from another one or the kind of relationship comes and goes in them. So um, that top head might be somehow whether that's it's in contact with the head beneath below it, so whether that's a threatening gesture or an intimate gesture, the ambiguity is what I'm kind of trying to get to. So those contents are Though, although I'm talking about the, I might be talking about draw, drawing in an academic and formal way, it's always kind of there, that's always there as a, um, that's just a vehicle really for content or um, the more emotional subjects of the work. Um, again, that's something like, you know, people want to talk about how, then, how that might work for them in terms of their practice. But I know you all that, I mean, most of you in the room, I know you work, and I know it's, it ranges from work that's kind of highly formalised and maybe just about the procedure, and then right through to more you know, social engaged practices. And there's that whole spectrum of um, intention, intentionality. But for me, I'm really interested in, in the formal, I'm also really interested in the kind of emotional and the, the content or subject in the old fashioned sense. Of don't deny that in a way. This one's slightly larger. Um, you know, I'm saying talk about the size of them. I'm determined not to sort of sit, sit here and talk about them. This one's like two metres tall. Because it's, I guess it's more, the more interesting means we could describe them. Um, so yeah, the, these are all quite finished quite recently, a few weeks ago really. um, and it, I came to a kind of conclusion with these next two pieces so this was um, again this is the, this idea of these three kind of forms figures and one of them's kind of um, one of them's like a fallen figure or um, is it a more sort of laying prone in the middle of a northern position and then the final piece which is I used as the piece for my presentation today was the I think this is the piece I'm most happy with you know, in terms of um, that kind of integration of technique with the ideas and, um, I've talked about drawing and I often think well, am I talking about it separate from this painting but I think, there's, I think the drawing is in this piece um, and is the idea of the unconscious is in the piece as well, and that, and that idea of somehow things being felt intuitively. And um, so it, I think it, it's, out of all of these pieces, this one in, in many ways summarises um, me as, a, as an artist and what, how I kind of, my ambitions for my work and how I think about um, all these sort of different threads coming together. 
Um, I'm about to embark on some other, some, some drawings in the coming week. <coughs> and I'm, I guess it's really going to be useful for me talking today because it will help me re rethink um, my drawing in relation to my painting. And I guess there's other ways, there's, there's things yet to explore. It's not like, it's not like I've exhausted all those permutations of the relationship between the drawing and then the kind of final outcome that we, that we get to. Um, but before, before kind of, I'm going to get us all to talk, sort of talk more about this. Um, how are we doing the time? About 50 minutes. Right, brilliant. <coughs> so, um, since finishing this piece, I've I found it difficult to work in the last few weeks. So really not. So having made this piece, I've, I've gone on to make pieces with the stencils again, so sorry, with the collage again. So I wanted to kind of finish by saying these things have come have come kind of full circle. So this is this is work in progress. So I've just been showing you finished things. I want to show you a piece now in progress. So this is the first stages of, of the work. And you'll see what I do. I've kind of got this collage of that, and now I do this with it. So I've gone from that to that. So I've made a kind of tree with it. And it's the same piece of paper, just on that one. So I'll go back to that one. So the white form is already in the, so it's already in it's already in there, so the kind of shapes that's, that, that that's making then become they become blotted out by by doing that, it's still those shapes. For form it's a really interesting thing I've made it's <coughs> witnessing that. I'm glad I've taken stages of this because mm -hmm. um, as I said it's it's been a really difficult few weeks for me for my, for my work and I'm not I really couldn't see what I'm doing. And I look back on it now through through the work in progress documentation and there is some sense to it. But the final image is this is the final this is the last version of the painting that I've got. And it's been I'm not into kind of struggle for its own sake. I'm not into it doesn't have to be like oh the hard one image and you know left the studio exhausted. It's not it's not about that. <laughs> um, but it was a really difficult piece to engage with and many times I thought like I'm gonna just cut this thing off. But I kind of tried to persevere with this piece, and this is the final version of it. And it's too close to call really, because I've just finished the last piece, I'm not sure. But moving around it, I know it's, and, and it's a figurative image again, so it's a tree, it's called Ghost Oak. And um, it's kind of, a, it's a big tree, and then there's a, a little sapling here, so it's kind of, again, it's like this family, family, family type idea there's you know there's there's imagery within it which you might pick through so there's that residual things left like there's a, an oak leaf there that's kind of left but it's not left because it's not left because I've been clever. It's just left through the process. Um, so there's many others that aren't there that have been digitized. So that's for me it's fortuitous that that remains. Um, but moving on from that, I've tried to make the last few pieces I'm working on now. So these, these, these are works I've got on the go in the studio. And this, this is a painting of those collage elements, so it's kind of looking like collage, but it's not a painting. Um, and it's work in progress, so there's just one image of it. I'm not, there's, not further, there's not further examples of what I'm doing. And then these last pieces are... Um, one thing I did try to do in these was I was trying to draw into the paint with the back of the brush. So these marks here made with the back of the back of the paintbrush. And there's something in that for me that is we may go back to the sculptural idea that I was able to kind of carve back into things like certainly something I'm thinking of in terms of the next three to three. Sorry, what, what do you mean by the back of the brush? Um the handle yeah. the back of yeah. the handle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Handle. yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Actual, some yeah. of the brushes are quite the handles yeah. are quite Thick oh, okay. back. Um, so I was able to, like, after I was painting, just turn it around and, and draw this into, into the wet paint. 
St. Gerard's a you know, flight across. Um, and then that's the last one. So that's the final image of the presentation. And don't think I've not talked about everything I wanted to, to mention, but I want to go just in the, in the last 10 minutes or so that just open the discussion to you guys. Well, just maybe this is just something I'm really curious about. Um, and it's, it's, it's great seeing these last three different stages. I'm really then conscious about the different um, the different paint applications and the quite different um, approaches in terms of the layers. Yeah. Um, and the kind of the kind of the physical approaches with the paintbrush, whether it's the front or the back of the brush. Could you just say some, something about this kind of the mark making? Yes. Because um, you've got kind of you've got. You seem to start with kind of colour fields almost. Yes. And then far more kind of. Yeah, I kind of start with these blended backgrounds, I call them. So it's a kind of like that. So if we took away the paper off that, there's a kind of background, which is already interesting. But there's a lack to it for me. I find those colours are really engaging, but for me, there's a lack. And I think of them as unpopulated backgrounds, like empty stages. So I think, well, this is beautiful empty stages. So you know, in many ways I kind of need to not mess them up, but disfigure them in some way. Um, and there's that, what Charlie just spoke about, is that whole array of how do you, how do you cover a surface, whether it's with a brush, whether it's with a spray gun, whether it's with your hands. I'm really interested in all those techniques. However, I'm really aware that they can somehow splinter and be separate. So the difficulty is bringing them all together in terms of them not remaining separate. So like the cohesiveness is quite important. To me, the kind of cohesiveness has become really important in my practice because I have worked in the past in a much more, you, could, you might say, a more, um, definitely a more postmodern way where that mix and match and blend of difference is, is stated for us. But I find that too orthodox. It's like there's like a postmodern orthodoxy in that which I really despise. So I've tried to think, well, no, I, I really want this difficult thing of being able to, it's much more difficult to try to integrate everything. So you've got all these different techniques, but how do you make them look like one painting, one, one image? And that's that's, a, that's the overall thing I'm trying to do, so that's a really good point to kind of come to conclude on. That's, and that's the overall ambition for what I've done in the last six months. I've really tried to make singular things that all come together. So all those threads come together. It's like juggling lots of balls, but I want it to become seamless. So keep dropping them, so I'm not sure whether. Yeah, I was thinking about the first scene with the early work by Seamus. Yes. And, and how that, this is now really shifted from yeah. more um, figurative. Yeah. Although it was sort of broken up from different spaces, it was representation. Yeah, it was representation in a lens based way. Mm. And that, that's the thing I've rejected. I've consciously rejected the lens based. Not, the, not the, the idea of media, I love that. The look of the world that the lens gives you. For me, that's not as interesting as what I might generate from my imagination, which I've tried to trust. Because I didn't before. I think in my work from five years ago or ten years ago, I didn't trust my ability to make things up. And I think, well, that's really what, as artists, we should be doing. And it's, I, know, I don't want to use the word stylistic cohesiveness or these other terms, but I do think of those things sometimes. I know that these things haven't come from the lens. The camera, the camera didn't see these things. Um, my doctorate thesis was, was, was titled The Creative Unconscious and the Pictorial Sign. So for me, I really wanted to work in intuitive ways that somehow tapped into my unconscious, but resolved, but gave, but, but generated images and signs. So they're still figurative, they're still narrative in many ways. And the work has a narrative trajectory in its making. You can talk about the narrative of the actual work in progress. Um, 
You mentioned earlier, Paul, mm. the, the transport, uh, uh, between transport and ambiguity in some of your work. How, how conscious is that, you know, is that, uh, is, is it like a little detective thing, or, you know, why, like, why, would, you, why would you want to be make it ambiguous, or, uh, you know? Um, I mean, no, I'm trying to, in terms of, like, the insights, I'm trying to not just, I don't want the work, I really don't want the work to be preaching. And to be telling me, wanted to be showing me. So I could sit here and tell you about what things mean to me. But well, that's exactly what you look at when we look at any of your paintings. You, you want you, you look for me. I look for meanings, and, and obviously, you know, you've mentioned the ambiguity. Yeah. You know, you know. It's not evasive. Uh, ambiguity is not an evasive tactic. It's kind of um, so. Don't think it is. Don't think it all. I'm not being defensive and keeping the cards to myself. It's that's the that's yeah. problem with doing it subconsciously because you, you don't know exactly what, why you're doing it. Really. You don't know what's coming out and for what reason. But that will throw things up. Yeah. Whether you like it or not. Yeah, it's all definitely yeah. mistaken. Um, I don't know. Would you find? I mean, is that what your reading of the work is that that it's uh, well, you mean, you it, not it, showing until you mention it, and then when you do mention it, obviously mm -hmm. you, you then start yeah. looking for that. But uh, uh, um, obviously, every one of your pictures is so intriguing, you know. And, and the fact that you, you, you know you work by emotions, some emotions, you know. I wonder what Paul was thinking when he put that one together. Or what emotions was he going through? Mm. Well, do you think that directly? Do you think you always reflecting that straight back to the artist? It, you know, often when you look at, you know, obviously, you know, thoughts on it, you, you, you do, you know, you sort of, you, you look, I look for meaning in, mm -hmm. in, in not sort of just, if it's just a landscape, you know, you get a little bit of that, but when you look at these types of abstracts, I don't know, so I always, I always wonder, and well, meaning is in. But I wanted to get away from, like, prescribed meaning where red means danger, because that's, like, too much like that. Designs. But then again, it's subconscious interest anyway, you know, you see like, you classical colours and, and you get a different feel, a different, you know. But they're right. not used for that. I wouldn't say I was using colours or shapes for their pre-described meaning. I hope not, anyway. And, and also, um, I don't think that Would you get that like, rev revelatory sense from from your work on that? Because that's what I that's what I've got to, during this last past six months. I've often got the rev revelatory thing where it's told me works told me if it wants to be this, yeah. and I've yeah, kind of gone with that. Or yeah. it's not it's not that you know if we look at an image like um, that one there, and this red form here might be. I think of it now as a as a figure lying in in, in, a, in a bed like position with these other thoughts kind of emanating from it. But I didn't set out to do that. That kind of revelatory thing occurred during the making of it. But I, th I think the other way to think about and it's interesting to say about the revelatory. Another way of thinking about that that I was I was sort of coming to and just thinking about how you've spoken about a lot of things is is the kind of collaborative activity that you engage with through the processes that you set up and um, which put you I mean it's interesting I've just been working with Georgia and Ed and um, you know that's a very different form of sort of collaborative activity but sort of central to that is the shift in tensions and in a way the kind of the processes that you set up through the 
through through the stenciling, through the cutting, through yeah. you, you know shifting the bits of paper across. These all kind of shift the tensions of where you're in control and out of control, or where decisions are being made, or where things are occurring outside of mm -hmm. uh, outside of certain actions. Um, so that kind of um, which I think is another going back to the things you were saying, Tom. You know, those are sort of other intrinsic things that that, that become really important uh, towards the attitude of the work that sit outside of just purely trying to unpack things through an idea of, of meaning or, mm. or 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 logic meaning through through an idea of representation. Mm. There's a kind of richer, richer. Yeah, and I think yeah. maybe collaborative is an idea that would fit that thinking because the opposite that would be that you're so in control of it and closing everything down to such an extent that it becomes so really ungenerous whereas I found to me the work seems more successful if I let go of that idea and um, think of it as a bigger think of it as outside myself. So yes, I'm making it still work. I think it's still work. I, I'm I'm so making it in a solitary way. But it would have you know, in terms of the collaboration you're talking about with you guys, it might be that it has it overlaps into what you might experience. I love the fact that you're actually collaborating right, between your subconscious self and your conscious self. Mm -hmm. Also between the surfaces, the materials and the actions. Yeah, it's like a dialogue. You know, the dialogue with, it, with materials but also with... There's a visual tradition as well in some way. I'm kind of thinking about whether that's in the postmodern sense or in the post-postmodern sense. It's definitely not thinking I'm trying to grapple with this bigger, bigger cultural visual tradition. So, but you're also... It's also you can do also as a maker mm. and also the observer. Yeah. Yeah, and which allows both to have its different mm. spaces. Negotiation. Yeah. Not after which short isn't though. like I, I, yeah, I, I, I slightly um, dislike the word meaning because Those thoughts of colour, and I don't deny them, but I wouldn't choose to frame them in that, just in that way, because it's limiting. Um, for me, it's limiting. I don't know, there must be other artists who it's, it's really important to feel, but I think within the context of experimentation and within the art college, you know, we're here to sort of, you know, me included, we're all here to to try out territory that's sort of familiar and produce work that we didn't that we haven't yet envisaged. Mm -hmm. But that's central to any that that's I mean go from <coughs> what Sue's saying there about meaning is is exactly right, you know, the, the better way, you know, it's not a singular term, meaning is plural. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not meaning can't ever be singular. Yeah. Yeah, because the conceptual isn't just the There's just too many multi not too many dimensions of it. Mm. Which is why it's rich and interesting. Exactly. Yeah. And it's about opening up meanings, not searching for a meaning. That's the kind of, that's the false economy. Yeah. But certainly what I think about yeah. it is that in in renouncing the kind of fixed meaning. I've experienced a greater depth of meaning because it's it's the you outcome's know, it uncertain and I don't quite know what it is yet. So it's like meaning to be, it's like the meanings that I get to be. So I've re I've renounced those fixed meanings, but there's a richer, deeper I hope that this connection with with emerging meaning, um, which is not just red means danger. Well, that's where the word ambiguity is. The fact that you mentioned family, that then, that then gives it another layer of meaning, you know, 
I've seen the head thing, but I've not really thought yeah. of the Hamley thing, so then that, that's really... It does, but one thing I'll read the way, and Mondrian's a good example of that, um, it's really difficult to talk about primary colours and black and white lines, but it's very easy to talk about... Um, Jazz. Yeah, to talk about... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. It's really easy to talk about social alienation. It's really difficult to talk about primary colours. And Mondrian, to me, would be the... Choose my drama over jazz. Over jazz is one. Yeah, it's definitely put you on the spot, but we were chatting yesterday. I'm just curious about your response to what you said the work. I was just making things out. I was really focusing on the drawing. Um, but the kind of spaces you've opened up in your kind of sketchbooks yeah. and you talked about kind of uh, being unhindered in those spaces. We were talking about the sketch, but it was, it's a more personal, like, I don't think about it in my sketchbook, but it's a lot more, it's just, I'll make a mark there. <laughs> Sometimes when you're looking at it, it'll just get into one of the cameras that I spend a lot more time really thinking about it than I do on the <laughs> So the sketchbook is a place where you have some freedom. Yeah. Yeah, it sort of allows you to open up a bit more. It's like spontaneity and deliberation yeah. about relationship. But sketch, like, that's the first mention today of sketchbooks. I sh should have thought more about that. But yeah, I keep a sketchbook. So I'm really glad that you said in my sketchbooks. Mm -hmm. I know that. I see it. I see it. I've seen it in some people here. I've seen it in the studio. I've got some sketchbooks. And yeah, there, there might be really interesting things in there. I think drawing has a place for conversation as well, like like making something last year with you, we draw it out and be like trying to understand we, we, how to make it 3D. We're drawing something in 3D and we're trying to make it physical in your head. And like George and I draw to communicate with each other because one of us says one thing and we like, I don't know what like, you're imagining, but it's kind of like that little drawing and then Someone else will draw it, and then it becomes this amalgamation of the mm. two drawings into one, and then it becomes the idea. I think that's an interesting way of looking at drawing, as mm. a not just a um, end form. It can also be so it's a community. Community, yeah. So it's the so the basis, yeah. And I suppose with, with your drawings evolving as just line drawing, and then the color adding, mm. and then the sort of what you were saying about you sometimes do see them a little bit thicker and coming out of the painting mm -hmm. is quite but that communicative thing just to get back to what yeah. you had one of us to yeah. that really that dispels the idea of oh this is just a private language because you can't have a private language because it's not a language yeah. you can read it there's you're doing drawings to as communication to explain I really like that idea it's like that's like the it's almost like that's a whole invisible realm that should just be like stick it on the wall and see it. And I think that's what you just said to me said pretty exciting. Yeah. I really want to see that. But well, it, fall, it falls into and it touches on that other aspect of the diagrammatic. You know, that's the, the diagrammatic is a is in, it, that is a, is, a, is an aspect of that in terms of in terms of kind of a, a drawing that that as you say has to have a sort of a multiple readership in a particular mm. way for often for sort of practical and sort of functional functional purposes. But I thought that, you know, what you were saying to explain so that diagrammatic thing where it's bring, where it's explaining. Maybe that's from for me, my sketchbook A4. But it's funny, you know, even you know, what is it? It's like, you know, we're we're really familiar with the triangle on its side. Mm. Yeah, that's a play button, right? You know, that's a diagrammatic piece of that's a use of geometric line drawing. In a, in, in a diagrammatic form that then becomes a sort of a transferable bit of language and, and, uh, and communication. Mm. But yes, yeah, so it's those kind of interfaces. Really, really. And I like, um, with the communication, like um, when we do it through our drawing sketchbook work and then we take it to kind of a, a more lens-based 
which then becomes the drawing along with like the use of light so it's the communication not just between me and Ed but the communication between that the image is laid so what we see I may like react to and communicate with so I might change it so that's now communicating back to it and then communicating to you which you might change and then I see it differently it's kind of like the space the image and then the two that are changing but they're also changing you does that make sense yeah, it does. and that sort of communication that it's not just us but also what we've seen that's communicating back yeah. if that makes sense it does. And, so, and what you described is a, that's a very sophisticated um, relationship between yourselves and, and this thing outside which is like, i really like the idea that it, it, it then helps you use the lens to find the image because that's not how i was talking about the lens i was talking about the lens in the postmodern way as um, just appropriating something that's given so you're talking about it in a creative way where the, the drawing is aimed at help you create through the lens so you then read draw, draw it again through the lens that, that to me is really sophisticated I'm really glad you described that 